Well, I never thought I would be saying this, but a black market drug saved my cat's life. Okay, Coco, this is your last FIP pill. You ready? That's it! You're done! Congratulations! Oh, and how nice Haroon came to celebrate with you. A celebration amongst friends. Good job, Coco. I'm so proud of you. Coco is officially done with her FIP treatment and she is doing amazingly well. Yeah, you kicked FIP's butt, girl. So about 12 weeks ago, I shared that Coco had been diagnosed with FIP or feline infectious peritonitis. It is a horrible disease that was forever thought to be completely fatal in cats. But in recent years, there has been a drug discovered that can absolutely save their lives. I've never seen such an incredible transformation in such little time in a cat. I can't believe what I've just witnessed with her. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, hi, Shushu. Okay. Hello. So what I want you to know is that FIP does not have to be a death sentence. There is treatment available. It's just available through kind of non-traditional means. This drug, which is called GS441524, is manufactured by a company that is not willing to license it for use in animals. So it can't be prescribed by your veterinarian. It's not commercially available. It's not accessible through the typical way that you would access a medication for your cats. At this time, most veterinarians have no experience with this drug. A lot of them have never even heard of this drug. And so when your cat is diagnosed with FIP, they might not even know to tell you that that is an option out there somewhere in the strange world of black market drugs. But there are now thousands of cats who have been cured because of this drug. And word is getting around. It's just a little bit complicated because veterinarians don't have the ability to prescribe it. But I want you to know, even if it's not something your vet can prescribe you, it has been extensively researched by veterinary scientists and it has been shown time and time again to help cats like Coco. So it's available as both a pill and an injection. With Coco's case, I started her on injections first, and at first she was receiving two a day, then we went down to one a day. These injections are not fun to give. They are very viscous, they are very caustic, they can cause a lot of pain for the cat, and they can also cause scarring to the cat. Because the drug is so caustic, it can kill skin cells, it can kill fat cells. Coco has ended up with a couple of kind of bald patches or scabs. She even has one kind of like bump underneath her skin, which really scared me, honestly. Um, I ended up having it aspirated and sent out for cytology to confirm that it was okay, because she does also have cancer, and they confirmed that it is just uh, dead, fat cells. That's something to be prepared for. If you're doing the injections, you need to know that, yes, it's going to be painful for them and you're gonna have some side effects. But the injections are often recommended in the beginning part of treatment. Different for every cat, but a lot of cats have a lot of GI vulnerability when they have FIP and they are kind of in the throes of that disease. So they might not respond as well to the pills as they would to the injections. So that was Coco's case. We started with injections and almost immediately I started seeing a difference. In the beginning, she was lethargic, she was so thin, bone thin. She wasn't grooming anymore. Her fur looked really bad. Um, and it, it just felt like I was losing my cat. It felt like she was rapidly fading away. And then as soon as maybe week one was over, I started noticing that she was starting to groom herself. And I was like, okay, girl, you're starting to groom yourself. Then I started noticing that she was getting more of an appetite. A big part of doing this treatment is monitoring your cat, you know, their behavior, uh, their eating habits, and of course their weight gain. I was weighing her every single day and I started noticing, wow, her weight is really starting to go up. Eventually she got stable enough that I was advised to switch her to the pills and oh my gosh, let me tell you, when you get to switch to pills, it is heavenly because it's a lot easier for me and Coco to do the pills. With the injections, she did establish a good routine. It's definitely easier if you have somebody to help you, um, just kind of like keep 
keep the cat there while you do the injection. Um, but with the pills, for me, I mean, it's, it's just been really easy to do those pills. She now knows that, you know, at 10 o'clock every morning and at 10 o'clock every night, we have this routine and she gets her little treat that she loves. And um, by associating a treat with treatment, your cat will actually start to look forward to it, believe it or not. In the beginning, you're gonna be like, no way, my cat hates this. But she actually started to, around 10 o'clock, she would come look at me like, okay, is it time for my treat and that stupid treatment that you give me? So I've just continued monitoring her, writing her weight down every couple days or every day. A thing that I will tell you has really helped with me and her is training her to get onto the scale. So I have like a human baby scale and I've trained her that when she gets on the scale, she gets a treat. So now she basically like lives on the scale. She's always standing on the scale like, okay, are you gonna give me a treat? I'm standing on the scale. But that has been really, really helpful for monitoring her um, that's a really big part of this monitoring not just monitoring you know weight and food intake but also monitoring their blood work so it's advised that you go every four weeks to check on their blood work and I did that for Coco and what I see is every month her blood work is getting better and better so she had her final blood work and it looked beautiful and that was how I knew that I was able to stop the treatment at 84 days after 84 days, they enter a second period of 84 days called observation. During this observational period, which she's now in, uh, we just continue to monitor her. I'm gonna be continuing to do blood work every four weeks. In this observation period, Shushu, I don't think she's gonna to wanna to hang out with you. I know you wanna hang out with her, but Coco is a lover of life, but she is not a lover of kittens. I know. So what I wanna say here is, first of all, if you are going through this with a cat or kitten who has been diagnosed with FIP, I want to try to give you some confidence that treatment really is an option for them. If fundraising is an issue, something that I did for Coco is I created a Coco t-shirt and I just offered to friends and people in the community, hey, if you want to help, you can buy her a shot. That was how I said it, and I thought that was kind of cute. I appreciated so much that there were friends and community members who wanted to provide that support in that way because it, it's a big undertaking. So that's an idea for you. You know, ask your friends for support. Do some kind of fundraiser where you can ask people to buy a shot for your cat, you know, and know that there is that guarantee uh, so that if something doesn't go right, um, you know, that is an option to get money back. I have to say, in most cases, this goes surprisingly well for people. In Coco's case in particular, I was so scared because she has a double whammy, FIP and cancer. She's on immunosuppressive drugs, she's on chemotherapy, and even with all that she has going on, she still has transformed because of this FIP drug. <sighs> I can't say enough about how incredible it's been to witness this. Now she is playing, she is grooming herself. She has gained two and a half pounds. This girl is 10 and a half pounds now. Like she's chunky, she looks good. She looks really good. She's shiny, her coat is beautiful. Really the only thing that is kind of like not ideal is that she does have some bald spots now and some little scabs. Really a small price to pay for her getting to survive this once deadly disease. I mean, it is profound to watch what has happened for her. So I just wanna say thank you to uh, the people who have helped me access what she needs, who have helped provide me with the confidence to do this. And um, I hope that her story can be encouraging to you if you go through this, you know, like it's gonna feel hard during the first week. It's gonna feel a little easier during the second week. Honestly, it like then it starts flying by. I, I've kept this log um, where I'm, you know, writing down every time that um, she receives treatment and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we're almost to the end of this. It will go by, I promise you. So if you have a cat or a kitten who is diagnosed with FIP, my number one piece of advice to you is to head to fipwarriors.com. Reach out to them, ask for help. I hope that one day this drug is available in a way that is not so like seemingly sketchy and strange, but in the meantime, this has been a lifesaver for her and I am so incredibly grateful that she's had the opportunity to do this because now I feel like 
I have my cat back. And this is like my best friend on earth. I'm grateful. Good job, Coco. You did it. You really did it. All right, Shushu, let's give Coco some space, huh?